Hello, my name is Blake Lang. I'm a professor of physics and engineering at Southern Adventist University. As I incorporate more research-based instructional practices into my classes, it really becomes essential for my students to read a little bit outside of class so that they can be exposed to basic definitions of terms, equations, things like that. I want to use our class time together effectively to engage in active learning to push them farther. And I find that many of the students coming to my class, they need some extra support in developing the new discipline of reading their textbook at all, let alone outside of class. And that is where the social reading platform Perusol comes in. Perusol provides an online community for my classes in which we can all read together the primary material for the class, like the textbooks, notes, PDF notes, journal articles, web pages, videos. We can all take in this information together, annotate that information, comment, ask questions, discuss those questions in threaded discussions. We can interact with the primary materials asynchronously outside of class so that when we come together in class, we've got something to talk about. We have, everybody has something to say, something to contribute. Many of my students really appreciate this shift to engaging in their textbook reading outside of class. And you know, it's a new discipline for many students and they see it helping them in their future. However, anytime we incorporate reforms based on research, it introduces some new things that are unfamiliar. And often the challenge is managing student expectations. There's a little bit of an art to that. The two objections that I come across when using Prusol is, well, it is e-text. You know, you do need to purchase e-text access through Prusol, and I prefer a physical book too. Uh, it's just, when I highlight in a physical book and write a little question, I'm not going to get a response. Whereas reading on Perusol, every question a student asks will elicit a response, will start a discussion. And that, to me, makes it worth it to make the jump. It's, it makes sense to try to step out a little bit beyond um, our, our comfort zone and try something new. Some students need a little extra encouragement there. But the other thing is, well, how come it's part of my grade? I get to the end of the reading and I have no questions. Well, when students say that, they often need a little coaching to understand what does it mean to read like an expert. Uh, and, and somebody who is an expert in reading technical information but is new to physics, by the time they get to the end of the reading, they will have something to say. They will have questions to ask. They will be reading at a deeper level, and some students need a little extra help in that area. Um, but to connect with these students, I want to connect with, with the thing that they care about, and that is their grade. Will using Prusol help my grade? I looked at the data for the last three years at my calculus-based introductory physics class, university physics, and when I look at the average test score uh, for students compared to the score in Perusol, uh, I definitely see a correlation. Now Perusol will grade students' participation using AI. Um, it will look at things like, how, is their reading distributed over the whole assignment? Do they get to the end? The questions they ask, are they sounding like expert-like questions or are they more like, why is this, what's that? Um, on a scale of zero to three, it will give them this coaching feedback of how expert-like it seems like they are, according to AI. Um, students scoring one or greater over the last three years, 100% of them had a 90% or better test average. Well, let's lower the bar a little more. Students scoring 0.5 or greater, minimal participation in Prusol. When I look at their test average, it's 92%. Compared to students scoring 0.5 or less, in other words, not really using Prusol, their test average is 72%. That's a 20 percentage difference. And so, yes, I can say with confidence, making the jump, stepping out of your comfort zone to try something new, try engaging with your reading um, as, as I'm guiding you to do with Perusol, will put you in an entirely different distribution. Now, a challenge we face every year is students need to be convinced that we're not going to memorize our way through this class. Knowledge is only the beginning. I need my students to come to class with a seed 
of knowledge and we will spend our time adding to that knowledge. This is Bloom's taxonomy and I present it in this way just to de-emphasize how important knowledge is in my course. What's much more important is understanding, applying that knowledge to new information, applying that understanding, analyzing new situations and recognizing what is the physical relationship at play here, evaluating solutions, creating new solutions. These are the things that are higher order learning activities. These are the things we need to be spending our time together in class. And that is why students from the very beginning need to understand, you're not going to read my PowerPoint slides to study for the test. Um, I'm not going to be your textbook. You're going to need to take advantage of what you can learn from your textbook so that we can spend our time together working on the higher order learning because that's why um, I'm here. Now sometimes students will say, um, well, that's not what we're paying you for. You're paying, we're paying you for telling us what's on the test. Well, no, no. What's going to be on the test is your ability to demonstrate understanding, your ability to apply that understanding to a new situation, to analyze new situations, recognize the physics at play. That's what's going to be on the test, and that's what you're paying me to help you develop the ability to do well in. You're paying me to coach you in these areas and that's what we're going to spend our time together. The wonderful thing about Perusol is I can tell students honestly that when you read your textbook you are not alone. I'm going to ask you to spend 30 minutes before class, maybe an hour if you really feel like you need it, but um, if something doesn't make sense, I want you to ask me a well-formed question. And by the time you get to the end of that well-formed question, um, that discipline of asking good questions probably will help you answer the question. But if it doesn't, then let me help you. Let your classmates help you. We'll take it from there. We can work on this together. I can ask questions ahead of time. When students get to a challenging part, they might see a question already there from me. For instance, I might highlight part of a figure and ask students to compare the slope of one curve to the next and what is the significance. A student can answer that, I can endorse that answer. But here's the great thing, if I take the time to ask questions ahead of time, when I import my course from one year to the next, all those questions are saved, they come with it. Perusol makes an efficient workflow for students. As they're reading, all they need to do is highlight what doesn't make sense, what they have a question about, and just start typing a well-formed question. Um, and every question starts a threaded discussion. If a student responds to that question, um, I can look at it, and if I like it, I can endorse it. If I need to add something, I can, and I can pick it up from there in class if I need to. This also makes an efficient workflow for me. I've used a technique called just-in-time teaching for years in which I spend the hour before class incorporating student-submitted questions and comments into my preparation for the class. Well, it's very difficult to do. Um, student comments are not in order and it just takes a long time to even just sort them out. But um, just-in-time teaching for the very first time is efficient now, is practical for me thanks to Perusol. Student comments are already in order according to where they lie in the reading. Um, my classes are small enough, I can respond to every single question, but for bigger classes, Perusol will generate a confusion report. It will highlight the parts of the reading that seem to be generating the most action and some salient questions and discussions from the, those parts of the reading. And uh, you can walk into the class already knowing what the pulse is of your class responding to that particular class. It's going to be different than last year's class. Now, in addition to assigning a textbook, you can add other documents or videos or web pages. And I'm taking advantage of that lately. My students, as I mentioned, are developing the discipline of reading. They're not used to doing that, and they're learning it in my class. And, you know, if reading technical information is like a muscle. You've got to work it. Um, to help draw students into difficult derivations, I decided I think I need some face-to-face -face encouragement. I could have just used a cell phone recording things like, well, in chapter three, let's pay attention to this and this. That derivation is not so important, but this one is. You know, it could be as simple as that. In Perusol, the video is assigned before the reading. Um, but I went one step further and I developed a light board so they can have a face-to-face -face personal introduction to work through more complicated derivations. And for, for students, um, before they get to the reading assignment, they'll see a video assignment like this. 
and as they're taking in that assignment, they can pause it as they need to. Um, if they get to a place that doesn't make sense, they can click Add Comment, as this student does here. He can add a comment, and I can respond to it there, or I can pick up that discussion in class. Bruce also provides analytics of what students are doing and how they're spending their time. Here's three different students, three different stories. Um, Understanding what they're doing on Perusol helps give me guidance on how to help them better when we talk in person. This first student was spending 26 minutes on average and he was doing it consistently. He earned an A and he was pleased to report that, you know, this is the first class I've ever read my textbook in and he was a science major. He was happy to share with other science majors that, hey, reading the textbooks actually is a helpful thing to do in class. Um, you know, provide that you don't spend too much time reading. We want to read a certain amount so we come to class prepared with questions. The second student was spending 14 minutes. And if I could look closer, I would see that many times she was spending zero minutes and sometimes probably 300. She was having trouble with consistency. And so in personal conversations with her, I was able to give her some you know, specific feedback on that. Not spending way too much time sometimes, just letting me help her, but being consistent with um, spending maybe 30 minutes per class. Now, this student was spending four and a half hours. This was an English as a second language student, and I had emphasized many times that do not spend more than an hour reading before class. If something doesn't make sense, then it's time to let me help you and keep on moving. And so in counseling her, I was able to you know, give some very specific feedback. She was spending way too much time reading, not enough time asking for help. Now for some teachers, teaching online, gallery view looks like the Brady Bunch has gone on strike. Now, if, if this is happening, this is clearly an instructional design problem. These students have their cameras off for a reason. They don't really have a good reason to turn on their cameras. And one consideration is, when we are meeting together, what is the model? Is this a meeting or am I just streaming? In the streaming model, that's like the traditional lecture where an expert broadcasts the information, like, like somebody on the, on the steps of a temple in Athens. Um, the, an online platform for that could be YouTube. Now imagine you turn into YouTube um, because you're trying to figure out how to fix your dishwasher. So the dishwasher fixer is broadcasting that information. You just want to take in that information. You're, are you going to turn on your camera for that? If the dishwasher repairman was saying, um, hey, turn on your cameras or I'll chase you down and take away all your points. Well, wouldn't that be weird? You know, that's how it is for our students when we tell them to turn on their cameras for no particular reason. Whereas, um, effective online teaching should be a meeting. Whereas, effective online teaching can be a meeting model where we come to class because we have something to share, we have something to work on together. These large meetings can be divided into smaller breakout session meetings and that is um, how Teams and Zoom was designed and uh, used properly. That's how classes can be run. This only works if students are engaging in the primary material of the class um, so where they're coming to class prepared to share what they've been learning. So as I incorporate more research-based instruction into my teaching, what's emerging as the essential tool for all of my classes is Perusol. Because it helps, Perusol provides a community to support students in engaging with the textbook, with the primary materials. Perusol provides naturally intrinsic motivation for my students. Suppose you were invited to a book club on a topic that is of interest to you. What would draw you there? You know, what would get you to come there? It wouldn't be points, it wouldn't be money. It would be a cocktail of intrinsic motivations, just enjoying the material, enjoying the discussion, having curiosity um, about the world around you. These are all intrinsic motivations. I think really, students really appreciate when they ask a question getting attention from me from their classmates. It just, it feels good to be part of a learning community. That is an intrinsic motivation. And that's very powerful. However, Perusol also provides extrinsic motivation because, you know, um, if something is important, it needs to be part of the grade. I only make it maybe 2% of the grade because, you know, some students don't like being graded on their reading um, and they need a little more convincing. Um, 
Prusol helps me with that. I don't grade anything on Prusol. AI does it for me. It, it gives me scores on a three-point scale. And um, I, if they get at least two, that's good enough for me. Uh, th those, that's an example of extrinsic motivation. But there's something else. Imagine you're signing up for a marathon in four months. You've got four months to train for a marathon. Wouldn't it be nice to have some specific coaching on what to do um, every single week? And furthermore, besides just getting assignments to do every single week, wouldn't it be nice to get some feedback on how well you uh, tackled those assignments? how expert-like you were in engaging in each of those assignments. Well, Prusol does that, and I think of it as coaching. You know, I tell my students to read before class, and I tell them what it means to read, but every single reading assignment, they get a score on a scale of zero to three. Well, that's some tangible feedback. And uh, the Prusol help files give us some examples of student um, comments that would score a one, that would score a two, that would score a three. This gives students some specific feedback on how do I get from this comfortable rut that's going to earn me a C to a different rut that's going to earn me a different grade. I think that's a very valuable feature in Prusol. And so, especially in this transition to teaching online, Prusol has been the number one thing that's held it all together. When we come together after having all engaged with the textbook asynchronously outside of class, you know, we all have something to share. It makes the online sessions just flow in a way that they just couldn't before. And I really want to thank the developers of Perusol for providing this tool for us. It has been just what I needed at this time. The developers are physics education researchers themselves. They, they really have a heart for helping students learn. The platform itself is free. The way they pay their bills is, you know, to get access to publisher materials like textbooks or journal articles or whatnot. Um, it has to be purchased somewhere. And it, to use Prusol, you just purchase it through Prusol. It's very simple. Um, if you'd like to use Prusol in your course, it's simple to do. You, start, you set up a new course. Um, I'm using Moodle, so I would start in my learning management system, Moodle, and add a new Prusol course. Within Prusol, I just add all the materials I'm going to need, all the textbooks journal articles or whatever it is that needs, um, that needs access from a publisher. And then you connect Prusol to your bookstore. So your bookstore sells one code to access everything that you've added to Prusol. It's, it's just really that simple. And so I'd encourage you to give this a try. I, I've really found it to be very helpful for my classes.